introduce ourselves since great we'll both introduce ourselves since uh not everyone knows Toshin and I or some people do but some people might not we'll then talk about uh why the book is even called uh, the path of empowerment that could be called many many other things but what is empowerment and uh, what's the work that Tasha and I do together that make this book possible we'll talk about the book we'll share some excerpts that we really love from the book uh, I'm really excited for that and we'll do a Q&A and then at the end um for those folks who want to stay we're going to have a dance party uh, DJ'd by uh, DJ Toshin. So that'll be a fun uh, experience to have if you want to stay on for that. So welcome everyone. My name is Mary Bajorek. Uh, I am physically located in Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. It's really sunny right now and I just looked at the mountains this morning and you can see the mountains behind me as well. There's a theme going on there. Um, I have worked with Toshin since April 2022, and I'll say more about that in a little bit. And uh, in that, I brought in a um, complementing kind of skills and insight of seeing people, encouraging people. And uh, that's all possible because uh, in my work days, I am a work life coach who works with people who are in transition points. In their career lives so a lot of the work that we do is very complementary uh, to that and I love I love people relationships are sacred uh, to me so uh, it, this also makes me so happy to have you all here because I see the web of relationships uh, in this room so hey, everybody questions. great thanks so much Mary appreciate you hosting this and so happy everyone's here um, I'm Tashin I am a wandering pilgrim who spends a lot of his time online from wherever I am. I like to joke that I live on the internet first and then just wherever I happen to be. And um, yes, I am the creator of an organization that we call the Service Guild now. We just renamed it. It was originally called Tashin Inc. And we now call it the Service Guild. And it has currently three departments, love, curiosity, and empowerment. And this is the empowerment department, which is one of the three areas of my life's work and I feel blessed to be able to work on this with Mary and just so proud of all of the work we've done and this book and very excited to share it with you. Great, thank you. Um, so the origin story of the book, I always uh, like giving context on why is, why is even the thing happening that the thing is happening. And it all starts uh, with actually me desiring to be on a podcast and wanting to share with more people the work that I do as a coach. Uh, and then uh, my new boyfriend at the time, Eric Chisholm, who's actually on the call uh, right now, um, knowing Toshin and and through an event that they were together, uh, letting him know that he has this new person that he's dating. He's very excited about her, but also she wants to be on podcasts. And uh, Toshin talked about wanting to have more women on their podcast, on his podcast. And so uh, we had a call. And during that call, I helped Toshin. Uh, unknowingly to me, I still don't know how I did it entirely. I will, I will. I'm just going to default to some kind of intuition or magic. I helped uh, Toshin... Um, articulate that the third of his uh, pursuits that he has had in his life, in addition to love and curiosity, which he knew at the time, was this uh, theme of empowerment, of helping as many people as possible do fun service projects in the world, and like really enjoying it and be of benefit, uh, but also have fun while doing it. And on that call also, we had such a good collaboration vibe. We were like, we're gonna work together for 30 or 40 years. And it's like, when you meet someone for the first time, that's a really weird thing to say, uh, but we ended up going with it. Uh, and that's how the uh, empowerment department was born. So in the service guild, as mentioned, uh, Toshin mentioned he is the guild master or the kind of uh, organizing factor of it. And we have three departments of which I am the chief executive the chief empowerment officer, so the CEO of the uh, service guild. It started off with uh, a program that we ran called After We Helped Nine Heroes do really cool projects and from there, it has grown to this buzzing community of over 30 uh, together doing fun service projects. Um, I think we even have more than fun service, 30 fun service projects uh, come through because some people have done now several 
of them. Uh, the fun service projects were anything from, uh, there were videos, uh, podcasts, blog posts, uh, offerings for other people. Uh, but more than anything is this feeling of connection and community and support uh, that the thing you're doing that might feel weird or might feel off uh, or you don't know what to do can be held in a community. Everyone has their own feeds and we're uh, like always reading each other's feeds and channels, keeping in touch. So it's feeling like a really um, exciting space. And throughout all of that, um, since the summer of 2022 up until now, Tasha and I, our main goal in the empowerment department was how to increase the amount of fun service projects, how to have more heroes. Uh, this is what we call all the folks that do empowerment uh, projects, how to support them as they move through their um, journeys through their service project journeys, which we call quests. We got a bit of a, a fantasy theme uh, going on to make it extra fun and extra uh, spicy. So um, there's a lot of excitement that's happening uh, in, in the empowerment department. And uh, throughout it all, Tasha and I learned a lot. The first program that we ran was very different from how it looked like the second year, how it looked like when we were working with heroes. Uh, throughout the year as well. We've learned a lot about ourselves, about what it means to our people, uh, and, and um, yeah, it's, 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 just... and then last year, about this time, Toshin on one of our calls is like, hey, have you considered we write a book? I was terrified. I was like, I cannot write a book. I don't like writing. I can't, do this and Tasha's like no no we got this I've written books before we got this we'll 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 write it no worries and so uh I trusted him with that process and uh since January uh of last year we set up a standing Wednesday morning where we would talk about a section of the book and then write uh for an hour and that kind of created the book that you that we'll be sharing with you today and we had a lot of fun doing that as well. And Tasha will talk a little more about the book in a second. Before we go into that, I'd love to get a show of hands or kind of some indication of people who have worked with us in the service guild who are here right now. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, for all of you to know, these are people that, that uh, are in the Discord that have done service projects and we so appreciate uh, them being here today. All yours, Toshin. Thanks, Mary. I love hearing the story of our department and our work together and also this book. Um, I'm remembering that right as we wrapped up our first cohort together of Give Your Gift, the cohort version of our program uh, last year, I was wrapping up The Path of Love, which is my book on loving kindness practice and the Brahma Viharas. And I'd been working on that for about a year. And I remember just that I'd found it so useful to really think for an extended period of time about that aspect of my work. And our, you know, I kept saying different things about love in the guided meditations I led or different programs I was running. And I hadn't quite seen anyone write the things that I was saying before about those practices. And just collecting them all in a book was so helpful. And I was like, oh, I think that would be helpful for our empowerment work as well. And in retrospect, especially because, you know, love and kindness and the Brahma Viharas have been around for 2,500 years or more. They're part of pretty much every major contemplative tradition, not just Buddhism. And I think a lot of traditions and practices have involved something like a life purpose and you know, doing service in the world. But the specific way that we hold empowerment, I hadn't seen anyone talk about in quite the way that we do. And I think one of the best gifts of writing this book has been just going very deep into what we see empowerment is and how we work together. And that's made a lot of the new motions that are happening in the empowerment program, like different programs that we're launching and ways that we're helping people possible because we've had so many conversations and built so much shared context about what exactly we're doing and why and how it works and what works well and what doesn't. And really exciting that we can share that with you. I think for me, you know, Mary mentioned that writing a book at all was kind of her growth edge with this project. We love having growth edges with our projects. And for me, the process of co-authoring a book was a growth edge. I had 
worked with other people on writing projects before, but never co-authoring a book and really both taking responsibility for the vision of a book and writing it. And Mary was so delightful to work with. And I loved just talking about these ideas with her every week and then writing them. And um, it was very fun to just see how the book evolved and really to let it be first and foremost, a book that we wanted to read. Like, I think we both love reading this book and I've loved rereading re it multiple times while editing it. And um, it's just fun for us to read. Like we love what's in here. And hopefully that means that you'll enjoy it too. If you think that these ideas are interesting and just so happy to be sharing this context that we've um, discovered, created together uh, in this book with you all. So Tasha and I are going to share a uh, an excerpt, kind of like a favorite a favorite part of the book. Uh, I asked Tasha when we were planning this to to pick one. He said it was almost impossible because he loves so many parts of it. Um, but I insisted we need to have a, a much more concise empowerment launch party than a reading uh, of the entire book. Maybe an audiobook is coming soon. I think that would be fun. Uh, so the part that uh, I'm going to read is uh, the kind of within the section of, hold on. Uh, it's within the section of what the process of empowerment and the, the title of the section is what is empowerment. What if I, I what if I told you I believe everyone has a vow, a calling? a purpose, and that when I walk down the street, interact with a person on Twitter, or have a call with someone, I play a game with myself. A game of seeing with fresh eyes, what is their, this person's vow? How can I help them? That game, and everything that follows it, is empowerment. Nobody's an expert in empowerment. Nobody knows all the moves that will help someone to live their vow. Tasha and I are not helpers nor teachers of empowerment. We don't know everything. We do our best to create a space for people to taste empowerment, to experience it for themselves. A taste is enough to be hungry for more, to start acting on one's vow. To live one's vow, to understand oneself and their relationship and place in this world, a vow must be acted upon. A vow manifests through projects. Empowerment is the portal between a vow and a project. It's, it is a light that illuminates our vow, and the more light we shine on it, the clearer it becomes. Empowerment is the process of seeing someone, reflecting what you see, encouraging their efforts, helping them steer towards their vow for the benefit of all, and then creating the space for them to do, uh, to do that for other people. It is not based on talent. Talent is not rare, it is ubiquitous. Everyone alive has a vow, and it is our job to recognize it in each other. Assume everyone is amazing. Look how you can help and support each other, and miracles will happen. Oh, it's so sweet, Mary. It's so sweet. Uh, Mary wrote that chapter. Very lovely to hear you read it, friend. Um, okay, I selected, um, for some reason, I had the idea. I just trust my weird ideas, and this was one of the weirder ones, and this is the one I want to read to you all, that we should have a myth at the beginning of the book, like a story, basically, about empowerment and where it comes from. And uh, I wanted to read that one today. I know it's kind of weird, but I love this chapter. I loved writing it and um, want to share it with you all. So this is a myth of empowerment. There's a, there's a note in italics at the beginning about this chapter. In Plato's Timaeus, Timaeus gives an account of the origin of the universe in the form of a likely story, ton ekota mython. This, too, is a likely story. In the timeless place, before birth and after death, there is a vast ocean. Its waters, luminous, jet black and transparent, ebb and flow in rhythm with the tidal pull of the very universe. The waters are magnificent, undifferentiated, but beautiful. In its vastness, it contains all experiences. Every experience ever had in the entire universe is contained as a drop in this ocean. Every experience you have had across your lifetimes is intricately connected to every experience every other being has had. The shore is lined by an endless number of empty, colorless spheres. These spheres drift into the ocean, and as they float, 
they take in some of its water. Within the limits of the sphere, the water becomes gaseous. The gas begins to dance and swirl and take on color, energy, vibrancy. Each sphere is a soul. The swirling gaseous colors that each soul sphere contains are the basis of each person's personality, character, and skills. The accrual of wisdom over our many lifetimes. There's an enormous variety of colors, including a rich spectrum of colors that the human eye cannot see. They form intricate, entrancing patterns, which sway and swing and play. Here lies a sphere swirling with pink and crimson. There a sphere with onyx and violet. There are spheres with all colors and combinations. Tans, emeralds, turquoise, damask, amethyst. They stretch in space as far as the eye can see and stretch in spectrum as far as the rainbow can dance. If you were to look at them- Sorry, Tashin, can you, can you read the, the section after spheres onyx? We yes. lost you for a couple of uh, minutes. Sure there. thing. There are spheres with all colors and combinations, tans, emeralds, turquoise, damask, amethyst. They stretch in space as far as the eye can see and stretch in spectrum as far as the rainbow can dance. If you were to look at them, your eye would run over them and be extremely pleased by the way they are laid out geometrically. And if you were able to understand the language in which they're laid out and their colors are arranged, you would see, ah, yes, this is the quality that this person has. If you were put, to put a sphere next, near your ear, you would hear its whispers, secrets, premonitions, gifts. These whispers reveal themselves in stillness, in quiet, in kinship, in the ordinary everyday occurrences of our lives and the extreme circumstances of a decisive moment. A deep knowing reveals itself, calling, stretching and eager recognition of the way forward. No soul is separate. They are all made of the same stuff, the vast ocean of soul flesh water, all drops connected in a substance of love, and yet our soul is just that, our own, in all its singular essence, its vibrant miracle texture, radical vitality, its shining magnificence. Thank you, Tashin. So now here's a space to open up for any questions that any of you have uh, about anything, the process of the book, the book itself. Uh, feel free to drop it in the chat, or you can just unmute yourself and uh, ask away. I have a question. Yep. Um, a, I love the reading. I'm so glad you guys wrote a book. It's amazing. Um, and really happy to be celebrating, you know, you and that process. Um, I know you said it was like a growth edge to do the book. And I guess I'm curious, like, how did you move through any fears that came up and like decide on, decide on what to, you know, include? Like, what did you go with what felt like intuitively relevant? Or did you have like, a plan or an outline that you came up with through your mind and just like I guess I'm curious about the different facets like emotional spiritual um, mental and like your processes around that sure I can speak to that first and then Tasha can can fill in um so on a uh, kind of process level, we started out with uh, creating just a Google Doc that was actually open to the to the public. Anybody could read the book throughout the entire process and see us work on it. And what we did is we put in headings of the ideas that we would uh, that we would put in the book. They're in, they were often informed by what we have already experienced in the empowerment department. So I think what is empowerment uh, was already in there. Some uh, an, an article I think Tashin wrote about the qualities of a service project. So there were some some baseline on that, and then. Um, Throughout the time that we were writing, we would uh, actually put breadcrumbs of thoughts under each of the sections so that we didn't kind of start from a nothing page and just like a title of it. And there were always ideas uh, underneath it, maybe just one, but it was enough to be a starting point. Yeah, I love that. And uh, I think what I was I was afraid of is that I wouldn't have anything to say. 
is that I I just wouldn't know what to write and mm -hmm. how do I do that and uh I was slightly coached through with, by Toshin and something mm -hmm. that he told me that really resonated with me is that we talk a lot more than we write uh, for a lot of people talking is a primary form of mm -hmm. communication. So we have a lot more practice doing that. So every Wednesday we would first talk about a section that we would pick uh, before we wrote it. So mm -hmm. then it also felt like I, I would have something to say about it Um because I just talked to Toshin about it. If I talked about it, I must have some some way to write it down mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and I think I never, we, we said we would publish this book in, in December of 2024. So we're early, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, in many ways, I didn't, like there was no pressure to actually finish the book. Like it was more about the process and about writing and about our conversations throughout the entire uh, thing. So it never felt like it needed to be a certain type of, performance it was it was a draft uh, we were also aiming to have a first draft of it and then go through a quite rigorous uh, editing process um I think I'll hand it off to you Tasha in terms of how you did a bunch of the editing so what made it in what didn't and also what your experience of it was hmm. um yeah I think everything you said is great um that's very much the process we had and um I think the fact that we both talk about this a lot with the people that we work with and with each other really helps. And um, if there was something we were talking about a lot, we would try to write about it. Like I know I talk about, for example, collaboration dates a lot, and that's been a really useful idea. And so um, I ended up writing about that. Um, can, you can you repeat that? You can do it again. Sorry about that. Um, that's if we found that we were writing about something a lot, we would make sure, talking about something a lot, we would make sure to include it and write about it. Um, also, tweets are just so useful for this. Like I, I, we would import tweets or threads that we'd written, and um, those would be the great a great basis for writing an essay about something. It's just like if we'd written a tweet, then that that was like a paragraph, and, and you could just turn it into prose. So, very helpful mm -hmm. to do that. Cool. Thank you. Very enlightening. I like the little um I like the little breadcrumbs and the um the talking about it before because that really does like nip the fear in the bud, right? It's like, oh, I literally just said words about this. So duh. I guess I can write them. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks so much, Sarah. Benjamin. Uh, hello, everyone, and congratulations to Mary and Toshin. It's very exciting. I can't wait to read the book. Um, and I would be curious to hear from each of you when you, if you, in a picture, someone picks up the book, they read it front to back, and they just like really get so deep into it, and it impacts them on like a deep body or even soul level what's the experience or the impact that the person has had? Ashley, do you want to go first? Mm, wow, what a lovely question. I feel so touched to receive these questions and the care that you all have. Um, questions are a love language for me. This is something I'm admitting to myself these days. And um, I think one of the big things I'm really hoping that will spread is this diagram that we have of what a fun service project entails. It's like a spider web diagram with five qualities, um, fun, beneficial, ambitious, and feasible, and U-shaped. And I would love for someone to internalize that and then just do a lot of service projects connected to that. How about you, Mary? I dropped the link to that in our um, chat, but the, the quest or ideal service project and the the diagram there um that's a really good question I feel like the main thing for me would have been like that they're really excited to do fun service projects and that they like feel in their body what a fun service project is I guess they won't need, but you don't really know until you do it but that they have like an idea an energy to do it I think to have this excitement and inspiration and motivation to do it um, and that they either decide to apply to be a hero with us in the empowerment department but that feels second I like 
uh, first and foremost, we want to have more people do these kind of projects. And if they do it with us or they do it um, by themselves, that that feels uh, second, but that there is this kind of uh, fire in their belly that fun and service are not actually two opposites, but they can actually be combined to have an experience of of doing something for the benefit of all beings, not doing something for the benefit of all minus one, which is yourself. Uh, so yeah, that's a really good question. Thanks, Benjamin. Zev, what's up? Hey, I'm excited to be here with you all. Excited to celebrate the book launch with you. This, this may be a similar question. Um, but I'm wondering who you wrote this book for. You know, who are you hoping will pick it up? Uh, who is your target audience? Uh, what criteria um, uh, would you say makes someone a good candidate to read the book? Uh, who, are you, who are you trying to reach? Yeah, I will. I will pass it on to you, Tashin, first. <laughs> Um, I think first and foremost, just me and Mary were our own ideal readers. It was like writing the book that we wanted to read. And the, in that way, it was a fun service project for us, like writing a book that was fun for us to read. And I think that that's like our ideal reader would be someone like me and Mary who loves these ideas and interest in them and can find them useful for any number of reasons. I think it could be a hero who's like motivated by service and knows that service is fun and wants to have some practical ideas about how to do fun service projects and how to be a benefit. It could also be someone who's like in the role that we're now calling like quest guide, which Mary and I have, and we'll be bringing on some new people um, who like want to support people and empower people. Could be like a coach or someone who's just, you know, encouraging to their friends. I think there's gonna be ideas for a lot of different people in this book. And, you know, we are first and foremost our own ideal readers, but I know you all, all are also our ideal readers. You you're connected to us and care about the same ideas and values that we have in different ways. And so hopefully if you take a look at the book, there'll be something interesting and valuable for you. My hope is that the people who read it are uh, people. And I think what I would ideally want is people who feel like service can be, feels like a chore or that kind of feel lost in it. And that this opens up a different uh, perspective for them that they can actually have fun while doing it as well. Um, and that uh, empowerment or fun, fun service projects are not things that uh, need to be done alone, is that there are other people who equally care, equally or more care about the thing that that we're doing. And it's, it's a kind of like a beacon also to find each other in this in this world. Like if you, I, I assume people that read it are people I want to be friends with. Uh, maybe that's a large assumption, but people who uh, resonate with um, like hope also that there is something uh, that that is possible and working with other people uh, in that is um, like can be an exciting, an exciting thing. Cool. Brent. Oh. Okay, Brent or is Helena. Up. Helena, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brent's sidekick. Hi, everyone. Great to be here. Um, I just had a question on the book's angle, um, on supporting someone who wants to be empowered. They want to be connected to their power, but they continue to engage in habits ways of seeing, spending their time, of seeing themselves that take their power away, that depower them. What kind of the books as both of your angles would be on like, what's the first step for someone who doesn't necessarily have the immediate energy or drive to step into that place of empowerment? Like what's next? What do, what do you, what do they do? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Um, So on the the empowerment book, one of the first, first things that it talks about is um, finding one's vow and vows and values are connected to, to one another. And I think part of the, um, like how to be empowered is to recognize one's own power and, and what is it that we care about and what is it that feels important to us in the world that's unique to, to ourselves. The book doesn't address this um directly there 
there's no doctor that's like, if you feel disempowered, this is what, this is what you can do. But it does, um, yeah, focus on, on the, the vows and the, the values. It also focuses on encouragement. It's like, how do you encourage yourself and others? Um, and, and to kind of have that flywheel of momentum going sometimes when we can't, uh, don't feel the power in ourselves. If we help somebody else, it then is a mirror and is a reflection for us. And and uh, we talk about actually explicitly seeing people and being a mirror in the book. So uh, I don't think there's direct ways that we address that, but the book does uh, give the foundation of, I think, reflecting and being like, what do all of these things mean to me? Uh, and I actually think oftentimes that can be more helpful than trying to answer the question directly of like, how can I be more empowered? It's like, well, what is the context that will create the um, the experience where I can see myself more clearly? Because I think all of us have the power, all of, that, all of us have a vow, but sometimes uh, our own ideas can uh, block ourselves from seeing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything to add, Tasha? Mm, I think there's sort of two strategies that come to mind of like working with any problem and one is to like fix the problem directly. And then another is just to like add good things and spaciousness around that problem. And I very much default towards the latter strategy of just like making, you know, like, yeah, I think following the fun in particular is a really good strategy of like things that you've just you'd have to force yourself not to do because they're so fun for you. And that's very much weave through the book is fun. And there's not a lot about like how to solve blockers or things like that, or like specific problems that you're having or, you know, bad patterns. And there are really good ways to work with those things. But for me, just like following the fun and what's alive has been um, what's worked for me. And then eventually the, the like bad stuff kind of dissolves or, you know, you learn to work around it or something like that. And so, yeah, just following the fun and, doing projects mm -hmm. that are fun, I think is a really powerful strategy. Mm, love that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Hi, B.I. What's your question? Hi, everyone. Can y'all hear me okay? Yep. Cool. Um, first, thank you, Tasha and Mary. This has been lovely. I love the excerpts you chose. Um, my question is about the the like frontier or edge of empowerment right now um are there any like practices or ideas that y'all that are at your personal like frontier edge in in the impact in your empowerment work like maybe a practice you've been wanting to try or an idea you heard about that's out there that's feeling a little spicy or new um yeah like what's what's on the frontier of the empowerment world. Cool. Like Tashin, you want to go first. <laughs> uh, I'm very excited about this thing we included as an appendix called the quest map. Um, and I think I imagine that if we have a second version of the book, this will be more prominently featured in the book, but it's just an appendix right now. But this is kind of a roadmap for us internally of how we're going to build out programs in the future to support people especially after they've worked with us initially, like what they can do to keep staying involved and keep developing. And so I'm very excited about that. And I think that you'll enjoy reading that chapter a lot, B.I. What do you think, Mary? Yeah, I really like the quest map in that uh, it's spicy in that we're kind of saying, oh, once you do a first quest with us, then you get to, then you go on your own quest. And it's kind of like, oh, you're not holding my hand anymore. This is exciting. And the next section, the next quest on this journey is that you band with other heroes. And it's like, oh, there it's, that's a whole different thing to be working with other people. There's excitement, but challenge. Uh, then the fourth one is that you actually create an organization kind of like the the service guild. So it's uh, it's spicy in that Tasha and I are trying to figure out how to help people without, like, I haven't done this before. I feel like a fresh-faced baby being like, I I will do my best to, to help you with my idea of that. And that's been really uh, exciting. Uh, we also have a section in the book uh, that, like, talks about, uh, gives ideas of what are the empowerment acts that you can do uh, for, for other people. Um, and something that feels like the next uh, edge for me that Tasha already mentioned is we'll be hiring, we'll be taking on new quest guides. So new people who will be doing 
having um, um, calls with our incoming heroes. Um, some of them are on this call, which is really exciting. And um, for me, that feels spicy because I'm also letting go of like being a person talking to, to the heroes and I'm like helping people help other people. And I feel a little scared about that and kind of giving away my Legos uh, that way. But I think it's really important to help empower others and kind of pass that, uh, pass that on. Thanks, VI. Sandra, and I think that'll be our last question before we, we wrap up and wrap up the Q&A. Hello, uh, I'm glad I'm getting the last one then. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just sitting here and just right now when you were describing that that path of the of the hero, uh, this has just like totally been happening in my life since I've taken part in uh, in the community. And it's been, I don't know, it's, it's just like impacted my life in really beautiful ways over the past year. So first, I just want to thank you for doing the thing that you're doing and following your aliveness. Um, and then the question I was with, um, or more just like an observation, it's really interesting how like both this concept of empowerment seems to have been like in your life and you have some thoughts about it that you want to share, but also I'm imagining there's some empowerment needed to actually put out a book about empowerment into the world. Um, and so there's like an interesting thing there of like, like, I'm curious what, what you learned about yourself or your empowerment through this process. That's a great question. Um, what did I learn about it? Well, empowerment, uh, I think comes in many different, in many different ways. I felt extremely empowered by Toshin. There's a whole, actually one of the first sections of the book is our empowerment story, where we have a chat, uh, where we talk about, uh, how we met and also how we empower each other. And there's a little beautiful excerpt as well, uh, there about that I felt so inspired by Toshin. He believes in me almost like to a point that's really scary for me. He's like, yeah, you can write a book. And I'm like, can I write a book? I, I guess I can. And and he's like, yeah, we could do like a, a retreat. I'm like, never even done a weekend, but I guess we can figure that out. So uh, there's a lot of feelings of of having Toshin believe uh, in me and and what I'm doing and uh seeing the gifts that I have that then he he encourages so much and he's so appreciative like if you have collaborators like thank them all the time that's been like a magical thing for me to just hear how much Tashin appreciates the work uh that that we do um there are also other forms of of empowerment I really appreciate Eric for just like empowering and encouraging me just being like a steady um support and a base whenever I'm freaking out about the book or, or crying or empowerment or, or, or I cry, it's okay um or being super excited he's like a steady base and that feels really encouraging and like so empowering that way uh and my parents who are on the call uh as well uh they have always encouraged and empowered me and I feel uh really helped by their example of the life they've lived and so when I think about what I've learned is kind of something that I keep I feel like I need to keep learning over and over that I can do really amazing things that I don't think I could do um and uh yeah that there are people that believe in me if I don't believe in myself I can believe in the people that believe in me and uh then be yeah and then and then really amazing things happen hmm I think for me, yeah, I want to start with talking about Mary of she's believed in me the way that I've really needed and wanted and yearned for. Uh, I was like, hey, I think there's this empowerment thing. And she was like, great, let's do it. Let's work on this together and didn't make me bad or weird for telling her I thought we could work together for a really long time or do some, this incredible work together. And, um, you know, me saying, hey, I care about love, curiosity, and empowerment. She's like, great, you care about love, curiosity, empowerment, how can I help you? And um, I think the other thing that comes to mind is just really admitting, yeah, two, two other things come to mind. One is um, really admitting how much I appreciate validation and positive feedback and like compliments and affirmation and just like, yeah, this is an important part of my creative process is like allowing people to witness what I'm doing and give me positive encouragement and support about that. And um, 
making it easy to do that, making sure that that's part of my process. I have like a channel in our discord where it's just like praise of Tashin, where I keep all the compliments that people send me and it's really motivating for me. Um, sorry, I'm, I think I'm breaking off again. Um, yeah, the other thing, the last thing besides sorry, praise, Tashin, can you repeat the last like 10 seconds? Mm -hmm. I have a discord where people a feed where people can, I share compliments that people, uh, give me and just like being nourished by that and seeing how much praise comes in my way. It's very nourishing for me. And then also I, I love that Mary had the idea for this launch party. Like it's not a thing I would have thought to do for a book that I wrote by myself. And she was like, we need to have a party. We should have a party. And I was like, that's a great idea. And just seeing you all and sharing this with you has been such a wonderful thing and um, makes it, mm, I think it'll have a bigger impact because we're sharing it with you all and kind of celebrating that this is happening. So I love that too. Yeah. So with that, thank you all so much uh, for joining today. Thank you all for the questions that that you've had. Uh, Tashin, can you drop the link to the book uh, that, uh, that we have? That's why you're here. I was like, don't forget to share the link to the book. <laughs> don't forget to share the link. That would be something that I would do. Um, so it's, it's uh, there and uh, some of the things that you can do to help us in the empowerment department is one to read the book. Um, feel free to also share it. It is it. Uh, there is no there's no like, please share it with as many people as possible as Tashin just put in the chat. It's zero plus pricing. So we want to share it with the world. And if you something that if there's something that resonates with you, like please tell other people about it. Some other ways that you can also uh, support us and the empowerment department is to either you apply to be a hero with us. So we're running uh, hero calls on a on a regular basis. If you feel called to do a project, uh, then you either work with us or with our new quest guides to figure out a project that will feel really good for you and it will be a, will be really fun and um, and feasible at the beginning. So it's gonna be fun and feasible. It needs to be a, it needs to be beneficial as well, uh, but it'll be fun and feasible at the start. And then join that community or if you have a friend that you think would be a really good fit for this uh as well then uh encourage them to to uh apply as well and then lastly uh if there's a fun service project that you want to do that's the most important thing that's the baseline uh so if you feel called to do that please uh do that or encourage somebody else empower uh somebody else to do that just by seeing them if you're if you give someone a really good compliment that really reflects what you see in them. It is one of the biggest gifts that you can give to somebody else. So thank you all so much for being here, uh, for sharing the book uh, and anything else you want to say, Tasha, at the end, before we go into the dance party, which you can stay for, or you can head out. We're just going to groove. Uh, just thank you all so much. It's been such a treat to share this with you and, Thank you for coming to celebrate with us. Thank you. We're going to do a round of applause for us as well. All right. So now for the for the dance party, 